Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to another recipe video. Today I am going to be sharing with you a recipe to make alavaca sauce. Um, I haven't made this recipe in several years and I don't know what made me come to think of it, but recently we just got back from Orlando and we wanted to um, get back on the low carb train so uh just coincidentally this is a low carb sauce which is amazing now i'm not going to be putting it on regular pasta but you guys absolutely can and it i can tell you it is delicious on pasta but we are going to be putting ours on top of zucchini noodles but i will show you guys how to make this delicious low carb as a happy accident because this is the same exact recipe that I would always make and put it on top of penne or ziti noodles and everybody absolutely loved it. But what you're going to need is you're going to need some salt and pepper and Italian seasoning, some plum whole tomatoes. Um, I picked up the large can of the Tutusoro. Um, you can use whatever brand you have, but make sure they are the whole tomatoes. I picked up just a very small bottle of vodka. This is just a 100 milliliter bottle of vodka. I'm not even sure I'm going to use this whole bottle, but you will only need a little bit for the recipe. A quart of heavy whipping cream, a small onion, some diced pancetta, and also some prosciutto. Um, I usually would go to the deli and get it um, sliced just right there from the deli. However, uh, Publix has these already conveniently packaged um, four ounce packages of diced pancetta. So I figured that makes it a little bit easier for me because this is kind of hard to cut into and also a four ounce package of the prosciutto. Um, I'm going to be using the Chef Chamois garlic butter. You do not need to use this. I just figured because it already has a little bit of Parmesan and some seasonings in it, um, it would actually enhance the flavor, um, but you would just use regular salted butter. Um, and But if you want to use the Chef Chamois, I got this at Sam's Club, it was like six bucks. Haven't used it yet, been wanting to use it, so that's why I'm pulling it out for this recipe. Um, and that's all you're going to need to start this sauce. So let's get into the recipe and get started cooking. So to get started here guys, I have my um, pot set at a medium heat and I'm going to take some of that Chef Chamois garlic butter and a big heaping spoonful and I'm gonna start um, melting down the butter into my pot. So it's probably I would say maybe two tablespoons of the butter. Like I said, you guys can use regular butter. You do not need to use the Chef Chamois garlic butter, but I think it's going to bring some extra great flavor. Now we're going to also, um, you know, if you don't have the Chef Chamois garlic butter, um, you can just use more Italian seasoning, salt and pepper into the recipe. So we're gonna let that start to melt down and while that's melting down, we're gonna start chopping our onion. So I just have a small, I don't know, I think this is just a regular cooking onion and I'm going to dice it up. Um, yucky on that side so I'm gonna take that part off okay I'm just gonna dice up my onion and throw it into the pot with the melted butter and get that start to become translucent and one tip guys if you do not want um, 
your eyes watering while you're cutting onion, make sure you have a very good sharp knife. So it does help to have a very sharp knife when cutting onions. Which I think I need to sharpen my blade. <laughs> I've seen those like onion goggles. I know some people have onion goggles. I don't know. Do those work? Do any of you have those onion goggles? I just always heard about having a sharp blade. So I know mine needs to be sharpened. So if you guys can see, um, the butter is starting to cook down the onions a little bit and they're starting to become translucent. So I'm going to start adding in our meat. So like I said, I had a little four ounce package that I was able to pick up from Publix of diced pancetta. Um, if you guys don't have a Publix near you or you are having um, trouble finding these, um, I do know that Boar's Head does carry a pancetta at the deli at Publix. Um, I've only, I have only not been able to get it at one other Publix before. Um, so you're going to just want a quarter pound of that and then dice it up. So this is already pre-diced. However, guys, I did dice it up some more to make it even smaller chunks. Um, so you're just going to want to start by adding that into your pot along with the onions and the butter. So if you guys have never eaten pancetta before, um, from what I understand, it is like, um, Italian bacon and the prosciutto I know a lot of people have had but prosciutto is kind of like a Italian dry ham um, I don't like to eat prosciutto by itself the only time I've ever had prosciutto is when I've made this recipe and pancetta I've never eaten by itself I've only eaten it by putting it in this recipe so the next thing we're going to add in is the prosciutto or four ounces. This is a pre measured out package, or you can go get a quarter pound of pancetta at your um, deli and dice it up, which I'm going to have to slice this up anyway myself. And if you guys have a tip on how to cut um, pancetta and prosciutto a little bit easier, because I always seem to have a hard time getting my blade through because it is it's, it's difficult it's difficult to slice meat when it's you know I know sometimes when it's like partially frozen it makes it a little bit easier but other than that no 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 so this recipe um, I have made uh, like I said earlier, I haven't made it for several years, and I remember uh, one, in one instance I had made it um, for my brother and sister-in-law's wedding. They had everything catered um, by this Italian restaurant, but my sister-in-law wanted my alavaca sauce. So I was like, okay, so I had to make a huge batch of penne alla vodka to serve I think she had like a hundred people there um, and it just it's so good I absolutely love everyone loves this recipe absolutely loves this sauce um, the sauce itself you could just put it on anything we put it on top of chicken um, and it has all the you know delicious flavor now if if you are doing a low carb diet, yes, this is considered low carb. Like I said, we're going to be putting ours on zucchini noodles, so it'll keep it low carb. Um, but it is very calorie dense because it does have um, a lot of heavy cream in it. So like today, I'm just doing one meal a day for today. Today's this is going to be my only meal. So I am splurging because this is just, it's so delicious. So I diced up all of the pancetta and the prosciutto 
and I am dropping it in my pot with the onion and the Chef Chamois butter. And we're gonna start browning the meat. Hold on, let me bring this a little closer. So we're gonna start browning the meat and then once that starts to cook down, we're going to add in the vodka. So I do still have this on a medium heat and it is starting to cook down. It's not quite ready yet. Um, the onions look nice and translucent. The meat is starting to cook, but we're gonna wait for it to brown a little bit more before we add in the next ingredient. But I can tell you guys, it smells so delicious already. Just cooking down the onions with that Chef Chamois butter and the prosciutto and the pancetta. Oh my gosh, it smells so good in here already. So this sauce does take a lot of time to simmer um, because I am not going to be using any thickening agents. I'm not gonna be using flour. Um, if you guys want to, you know, you don't care about, you know, putting flour into your sauce, um, you can make a row to help thicken it up faster when you put the cream in, but I am not going to be using any flour in this recipe, so it will take a little bit longer for my sauce to thicken up. So if you're not familiar with what a roux is, it's you take some butter and flour and mix it together and you put it into the, um, the pot and it, and it kind of helps thicken up your sauce. So in the meantime though, because it's going to take a while, I am having myself a cup of coffee and I wanted to show you guys one of my new cups that I got from um, that Anesco I Am Mud. I don't know, I'm just obsessed with their cups. Um, no affiliation, no nothing. Um, I just, I found them once on Amazon and I just can't get enough of their coffee mugs because they're just the, the perfect size and they just, they're really, really nice mugs. So I can leave a link for the mug if you guys are interested but like I said there's no affiliation whatsoever I don't it's just if you guys think they're cute ski because I think they're cute yeah, ski nice. oh it smells nummy yeah. oh oh my little guy just came in and said oh it smells nummy you like it yeah, yeah. all right uh, I will be back when we're getting ready to put in the next ingredient so still at a medium heat we're going to add in our next ingredient, which is going to be the vodka because we are making an a la vodka sauce, right? So this is just a 100 milliliter bottle of vodka. Um, I am not a vodka connoisseur in the least. Um, so I just, I asked the gentleman that worked at the store what would be a decent vodka and I only needed a little bit. Um, and this is what he suggested. So if you, you know, want to get a different vodka, that's fine. You don't need to use this brand, but this is a hundred milliliter bottle. I don't think I'm going to use the whole thing. You just want to make sure there's enough to coat the bottom of the pan and all of the meat and juices. So, um, I'm going to see how much it takes. It might may take the whole bottle because there is quite a bit in here, but let's just see. Okay, so a whole 100 milliliter bottle of vodka and that has covered everything. I'm gonna kinda just get it all in there so that way this can all simmer down. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to simmer down the vodka so all the alcohol is cooked out of it because you don't wanna get all of your guests and your family drunk. So um, now that this is in there, I'm going to let this simmer for a bit to make sure all of that alcohol has... <laughs> My little guy decided he wanted to help with the lights. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to make sure that you cook all of this out. Let this simmer for a bit. I'll let you guys know how long I let my sim mine simmer for um, because you're going to want to make sure to simmer and cook out all of that alcohol. 
So I will be back and let you guys know how long I let this simmer for. Okay guys, it's been roughly 12 minutes um, that I have let the vodka simmer down and you can see there's just a tiny little bit of liquid in there still. Um, so I'm gonna start adding in the next set of ingredients so we can get started on the next thing. So I'm going to be putting in one teaspoon of ground black pepper. Actually a little bit less than a teaspoon. So let's say like three quarters of a teaspoon. I am going to put in a teaspoon of salt. This is a very, going to be a very big pot of sauce guys. And then I'm also going to be putting in a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. So I just have the Winn-Dixie brand Italian seasoning. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to be adding in, guys, is going to be those peeled plum tomatoes. These are whole tomatoes. And this is a 28 ounce can. So we're going to be putting in those whole tomatoes. And then what we're going to be doing with those tomatoes is we're going to take a potato masher or if you guys have like one of those meat mashers um, you're going to just kind of mash those tomatoes just slightly I mean I've even gone in and just by hand just squeeze them and crush them up myself but not in the pot before they go in the pot so you're gonna to wanna to just crush up those tomatoes. And I think actually, I think this one This one might work better, my little meat masher one. But like I said, I've done it with my hands and you just kinda, of, oh yeah. The meat masher one, much better than the potato masher. <laughs> and you're just gonna kinda of crush those up so I don't know why guys you would, I've always done it with the whole tomatoes and then just mash them up myself. I feel I've made it with um, diced tomatoes before and for whatever reason it does not taste the same. So get the whole peeled tomatoes and crush them up yourself. Because it does, it, it does, for whatever reason, it does make a difference. I've noticed it made a difference. So if you want to go a little bit on the wild side and do it with the crushed tomato or diced tomatoes, have at it. But I, like, I've tried it like that before, and I've found that getting the whole tomatoes and crushing them myself, just, it, ha it has a better flavor. So before we add in the cream, though, I'm going to let this simmer. For a few more minutes before adding in the cream and I'm going to be back with that okay I let the tomato mixture simmer for probably about another 10 minutes or so and that way I can kind of get some you know these um, you know everything can kind of mix together and just get really incorporated and the meat and everything soaks up the tomato juice and everything much better at least I feel like it will and um, also let it simmer a little bit to release some of the extra water from when we poured the tomatoes in um, now I'm going to be putting in a quart of the heavy whipping cream again like I said guys this is a very calorie dense recipe um, so it will have a lot of cream in it, but it is so good. I mean, you're not eating the whole pot I mean, you can if you want to, but that's it. One quart of our heavy whipping cream. And like I said, because I did not put in any kind of flour or thickening agent or anything like that, I guess you could probably put in like maybe some xanthan gum, but I don't cook with xanthan gum. I 
not that I'm anything against it. I just I've never cooked with it. It kind of just weirds me out a little bit. Um, so you could use that to help thicken this up faster. But if you let heavy cream simmer long enough, it will thicken up. So I'm just going to let this thicken on its own and let it do its thing and simmer. So I will let you know how long I let it simmer for to be at the consistency that I like. So that's it. That is everything that you need to make this sauce. So just a quick update on the sauce. It's been simmering for about half an hour so far. It's not ready yet, guys, but I wanted to also let you know that I dropped it down from a medium heat to like right in between like a low to medium heat because you don't want it to be at like a roaring simmer you want it to be a very low simmer so i like i said it's only been about half an hour and this is the sauce so far as you see it's still very liquidy um, because i did not add any um, thickening like a row or anything like that so this is what kind of you just want to keep it at like a low simmer so my sauce has been simmering for about an hour and a half now and I just, you know, every 30 minutes or so I'll just come in here and give it a stir. Um, it is not super thick. Um, if you put in a little bit of xanthan gum or if you did the um, row with a little bit of flour, it will thicken up more. I turned off the heat which will start making it cool, which will also help it thicken up a little bit. But since it is almost dinner time, I am going, I shut this off. So I'm gonna get started on some zoodles. Um, I'm gonna just use the same pan that I made the kids some chicken cutlets with. And I am just going to be using these bird's eye veggie spirals that I got from Publix, like what was it last week guys, when they were buy one get one free plus our coupon. So I'm going to be using a package of these. These are steam in a bag. So I already have steamed it in my microwave for five minutes, but I'm going to crisp it up in the pan and add some of the sauce in it and let um, some of that sauce absorb into the noodles as well. And here, let me just move the kids chicken. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with these. And there's just come some of the little bits and stuff from the chicken cutlets still in here, but I just wiped it, um, with a paper towel and I put it in a little bit of olive oil and now I'm going to add in my zucchini. So there is a lot of liquid after you steam these in a bag, guys, there's a lot of liquid in them. So I kind of just like carefully, you know, drained out most of the water and I'm going to just fry these up in the pan to help them kind of crisp up a little bit. And then I'm going to add in some of that alavaca sauce. So here is my dinner all plated up now, guys. I have that alavaca sauce on top of a um, good amount of those zoodles. And as you guys can see, you see all those chunks of the pancetta and onion and tomatoes in there. And this is such a beautiful and a luxurious sauce, guys. If you are not doing anything about like low carb or anything like that, and you put this on like regular pasta, it is to die for. And even the best part about it is that we made such a big batch, there's leftovers for tomorrow. And in my opinion, pasta the next day, once it soaks in all those you know all the sauce and everything is always better the next day but this is my dinner tonight i cannot wait to dig in because it smells absolutely delicious so if you guys give this recipe a try please give me uh you know let me know down in the comment section below because i'd love to hear it and if you like it, please give it a great big thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, guys. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great week. Bye-bye.